since 15 years. I always like go after competition. And that's what drives me. For me, this is the maximum thrill. It's me, Rene, from Obatech.gg, and as you can probably tell by the surroundings today, is a special one, Epic Factor, where we head out and visit favorite content creators, people from the sim racing seat, whatever we can come up with, basically. Today, we're in the beautiful Czech Republic, more or less in Prague, right there. You see the city in the background as one of our, and hopefully your favorite content creator, told us to meet him here at Card Planet. So I'm more than excited to see what we do, and I hope we do some of the racing there as well. And Hey, Jenny, you ready? Hey, Rene, come down here. My name is Jaroslav Wonzik. I come from Prague. For about four years, I lived in a village outside the city with my father when I was in high school. It was quite tough, I would say, because I was around 10 years old until 15. The internet was not existing in, in the village. It was the worst thing ever. If it was raining, you didn't have internet and stuff like that. Then my father, because I wasn't very good at school at the time, he was really, really strict at me. So yeah, the starts were difficult. When I was like around 13, 12 years old, I finally could understand that my father is doing some real racing. He was doing like for Fiesta Cup, Skoda Octavia Cup. So I was like following him to racing. Uh, he was like very happy as well because I was like going to his racing weekend with him and it was really cool. I was sitting in the race car as a little small kid and uh, it was great because since 12, we basically were developing like with my father, like a relationship towards that I might be racing as well with him in the future. And originally we were like, okay, we got to do go-karts because the go-karts are like entry, you know, for the racing and such. So since like seven years or eight years, I was doing go-karts in a rental places because we never had the money for like a normal racing or championship or stuff like that. And because my father was doing the Ford Fiesta Cup at 14, they changed the rules that we, I could drive as a kid. So he was like, okay, let's start because you're like, you have to right now because it's 14 years old. We have a sponsors, so we can afford it. And I did my license and we started racing and it was blessing. It was blessing back in the day. In 2006, we finished our BMW Championship and we had like a massive plans for the next season that we will have a sponsors and partners because we won and everyone was like, wow, because I was 18 at the time. And we were like about to do some big switches for the next season, like driving Porsche Cup or something like that. But I got really sick in like just before the end of the season. I was basically the last two races of the season. I was like really, really ill. I lost like 15 kilos. I was having inflammation on the lungs, I think. And my lung was like failing as well a bit. So I was like for two months, I was like completely sick home. And which is okay because I got through it. But the problem is my father caught it as well. And he got like way worse in a way. So my father got like really, really sick. And we basically, because of that, we stopped racing because like what happened, my father was like, for like two years, he was really badly ill. Because of that, uh, his co-workers, they basically like stole his company and stole the partners and everything. So basically my father lost everything. And like, obviously for racing, you need money. So basically like everything went to like shit. As a kid, you don't understand it properly yet. And my father was like very limiting at the time. So we were like arguing a lot. And so like the relationship basically like broke, he kicked me from the house and we live. And for like, I don't know, four or five years, we had like a really terrible relationship. Like we basically barely like not existent to each other because it was hard, it was hard, yeah. Four or five years, I've been completely like dead to each other. Like I was pissed at him, he was pissed at me. And because we said so many things <laughs> against each other. And then uh, like the bad thing happened that my father got a tumor and he wanted me to like take care of him a bit. So we basically were okay, put this aside, take care of the dad. You know, he got through the surgery, he got better. And he, he basically, how he got from the surgery, he was like staying with us or we were like, he was coming for lunch or dinner occasionally because he's not living here, he's living in Germany. And 
it really like fixed the whole relationship completely because the thing that helped as well is like my father realized that I'm like grown up. I'm like having my own life, you know, we are having our dog, we are having our girlfriend, we are living in our place and I'm like successful in what I'm doing. And my father kind of realized that and he created like a respect towards me. And he's always like saying that he's like super proud. Like the things that I never heard when I was a kid, basically, now he's like, shockingly happy, you know, it's like completely revisited the relationship and I'm very grateful for it now, yeah, very much. Just as I started racing in like 2002 in real life, he was like, he was very smart in this, he was telling me like, you need to use these games for like learning, because obviously like we didn't have the money to do like a proper testing, we had like other people were, for example, they rent a racetrack and they had 20 sets of tires and they were practicing whole weekend. But we literally were like saving budget all the time. So I did like free quality laps and 20 minute practice. And that was it, you know, before the racing. So we had like absolutely lacking practice overall. And he was always telling me like, use these games to get some advantage or to practice like overtaking and, and such. Because even with the AI, it still works. You know, you can see how to behave and so on. It's basically, yeah, 2004 I started sim racing properly. And, and then people told me like, you can go into iRacing in like 2009 and then you can play against people from another world. Uh, and I was like, wow, you can actually play like, like with people from United States, you know, Italy, Germany and so much. Not only Czech people. And uh, I was like, I really want to know how fast I can actually be. So I joined iRacing, we started like racing properly and I managed to make it into the iRacing World Championship, which was like the top I remember. <laughs> and the horse was like, I didn't have a proper gear, so I had like a normal wheel and uh, my table was too like big to put a wheel on. So I took from, from balcony, my mother had like a little tiny table, it was like this size table for flour. And I took the <laughs> table, put it next to my rig, put like a big foams around it to like make it hold. And I was driving on it and the biggest fun was like every single straight I had to like push it back because the table was like one kilo. When you turn the table was moving as well, you know, it's like the best. So like having gear like this is like, like my gear completely changed in the past few years thanks to YouTube and thanks to the partners and the community we built. I was able to like get better stuff and it's just insane like how you get from a little tiny chair with the wiggle table to something that is like so nice. YouTube basically brought me closer to real racing than ever any other job, which kind of makes me realize that I maybe should have started sooner. <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, I think I had to grow up because like, I think that 25 year me would not be able to have what I have right now in 33 because like of this. You're racing driver, you figured it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you're not a racing driver. My license is invalid. Yeah. It was 15 years ago. It doesn't count anymore. I mean, I can misbehave and my license will be invalid today if you want to. <laughs> we are registering Rene so he can actually drive as well because he never been here. I've been here like once in the past three years. So. <laughs> Look at that. I call yeah. this enter weight. Yeah. But I don't want people to know why. You're too skinny or too fat, you know, they will not allow you. <laughs> is that the case? <laughs> Every time it's so depressing how long you have to scroll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, I get it as well. Like oh, you're going down, yeah. scrolling as well. How old are you? Like, oh yeah. my god, old boy. Hey. <laughs> I'd like to point out that Rene has 60, almost 60 kilos advantage of me in a go kart. Like extra a real sim racer, he already has like all the one excuses. Extra person, uh, one extra person. But we're your home track, your home country. You have your own gloves and helmet. I got nothing of that with me. 60 kilos is 60 kilos. 50 kilos yeah, is 50 yeah, kilos. Yeah, yeah. It's but we, we now learn, so you have been here <laughs> and painting even the tires of this track and help building it. And yeah. then you still want to tell me you don't have the upper hand going into this. No, I don't. <laughs> the layout changed several times. I haven't, in the past few years, I have been once here and we were driving on the snow with my girlfriend. You still, it's like driving the snow experience so we know exactly how it is to drive. It was also the other way around. Snow. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the world was the other way around and everything and <laughs> Like, uh, gravity didn't work the same way. I'm 50 kilos heavier, you know? It's like me driving with double-seater with my girlfriend almost, you know? <laughs> yeah, we'll just put, put the cameraman on for my... And I'm carrying the GoPro, I'm carrying the GoPro. Oh, it's extra oh half my a kilo, God, the GoPro is so heavy. <laughs> Don't tell me. I think they're actually done now. 
So uh, I think we have to get ready. And the group of the dude. Apocalypse time. Beautiful weather and parting. Can't get better than that. Well, I'm not sure if I go into the garden to do some gardening or if we go racing. <laughs> So I'm going to just take him out in the first corner. First wall, René Bat going in the wall. It's not the newest BMW or Porsche, it's shaking a bit. <laughs> Everything hurts. <laughs> but we did! We managed! Last to first challenge! It's not like I'm celebrating this at all! Not at all! <laughs> oh man, that was fun! <laughs> oh, it's way more exhausting than I remember! Right? Right? Oh, my fingers! Because here you go really fast! Yeah, it was like, it's, a, it's a super fast track! So that, you remember and a lot of, lot of shifting yeah, and yeah. all that! Dude, have you seen the hairpins? I had no chance. Crazy. <laughs> nice, like my arms are just gripping the steering wheel because in the fast sections you're like, whoa. He told me I got, he told me I got a go-kart with smallest seat and the most forward. So I was sitting like this <laughs> and, and I couldn't breathe. I was like, no one needs that. I was driving, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> so official winner of the last to first challenge, I would say. Uh, I also want to announce the end of Jadier's channel. He will probably just end his career now. There's, there's not much more to say. I thought that might work as an ending.